What is good, cars? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm bringing you all another MLB The Show 21 Diamond Dynasty video. In today's video, we are talking end game cards in Diamond Dynasty. It is November 1st, so there's not too many months left of MLB The Show 21 Diamond Dynasty. So you're probably wondering which cards should be on my God Squad for the remainder of the year and which positions are we still waiting for that certified number one overall card. If you're excited for this video, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're new. I would greatly appreciate it. But without further ado, I hope you all enjoy the video. And let's get it. Minica, watch me on Twitch. Ooh, I'm streaming. I'm on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Red button beaming. Let's get that sub count. Take over YouTube. Ooh, we teaming. My content so high. Ooh, yeah, I'm steaming. Ooh, yeah, I'm steaming. Red button beaming. Okay, everyone, I am back on MLB The Show 21 Diamond Dynasty, and today we are talking the end game. It is November 1st, which means we are almost at the end of MLB The Show 21 Diamond Dynasty, so it's time to see which cards are end game at their position and which positions we're still waiting for that no doubt end game card. So let's get things started with the first baseman position. And in my opinion, I think we do have our end game first baseman. I think it's the 99 overall Lou Gehrig. This man is a beast against righty arms max contact and power against righties 125 each 123 contact against lefties 115 power against lefties is not bad in the field either 80 fielding 77 reacts time which is not bad for a first baseman 80 fielding 77 reacts time those are the two most important stats you need to look at for a first baseman arm doesn't really matter too much because he's not gonna be throwing the ball too much and he has decent speed for the position at 58 speed 27 steel i think he's better than david ortiz i think he's better than frank thomas i think he's better than vlad jr i think lou Gehrig is is the best we're gonna get for the entire year at the first baseman spot i think he is end game but we'll have to see for sure but i think off the bat he's a great hitter pretty solid in the field pretty solid speed great against righty arms i think he's the best we are going to get at the first baseman spot for this year now I'll move on to the second baseman position now when you take into account secondary positions you have guys like mookie betts chris taylor kike hernandez i think mookie betts is going to be the end game second baseman when you take into account secondary positions but are we going to get a better better primary second baseman I honestly do not know we have Jackie Robinson Jazz Chisholm's pretty good Craig Biggio's pretty good Jose Altuve Tommy Edmond these cards are all really really good but they're not great they're not Mookie Betts they're not Kike Hernandez they're not Chris Taylor they really can't keep up with any of the secondary position guys that can play second base so will SDS drop a end game second baseman we will have to see it in the comments down below let me know who do you think that would be if they do drop an end game second baseman card so I do think this position is one that we are waiting on for an end game card same thing with shortstop but shortstop has way better options than the second base position does we have honus wagner we have the 98 trey turner we have wander franco we have the 99 francisco lindor we got some switchers like lindor with great power great defense pretty good speed we have good contact and honus wagner with great defense great speed and decent power and then we have my favorite hitter at the plate at the shortstop position trey turner great contact great speed not the best in the field and he has good power way better in game so all these shortstops have like a good thing about them switch hitting bat with good power and Lindor good contact good speed and honus with good defense and then Trey's really good at the plate but they're not all around a great card kind of like the second basins but a little bit better than the second basins in my opinion a lot of people use shortstops at second base and I still think that should be the case because the shortstop position is better than the second baseman position but we're still waiting for that end game shortstop we will have to see who they drop 99 Derek Jeter coming soon they're about to buy his rights best shortstop of all time just kidding, as a Yankees fan, I would love to see that car, though. That would be absolutely awesome. Then we move on to the third baseman position, and there is a lot of great options, but I do think 99 Chipper Jones is the end game third base, and really going to be tough to beat this Chipper Jones card. Switch hitting bat, the best stats against lefty arms, 125 contact and power against lefties, good against righties as well. 107 contact against righties, 112 power against righties, good in the field when you get them piled up, pretty much 80s in the fielding stats, and good speed for the third baseman position. If you can't get Chipper Jones, Rafael Devers is really good. Josh Donaldson's really good. Nolan Arenado is really good. So there's a lot of great third baseman options, but I do think we are going to have our end game third baseman in Chipper Jones. So I think the third baseman spot, first baseman spot, we do have our end game cards. Middle infield, we need some better options for that end game middle infielder. Now move on to the catcher position. And this is another position I believe we do not have our end game card. We have Ali Rutschman, who I think is really good. Pudge is a pretty solid card defensively. Good contact, not the best 
that swing doesn't have much power at the plate Ali is a switch hitter here with good contact good power great defensively and good speed then we have JT Ramuto is good speed good defense Will Smith pretty good as well Yasmani Grandal probably the best hitter at the catcher position when we're talking primary positions switch hitting bat great contact great power decent in the field but he's super super slow one speed that's just unusable in my opinion and then we do have Kyle Schwarber who's technically the left fielder but everyone does use him at the catcher spot great hitter decent behind the plate defensively and decent speed but I do think we are waiting for that 99 no doubt end game catcher maybe a Jorge Posada we have a few Posadas but no 99 Posada switch hitting bat could be really good to play and decent defensively that could be an idea for the end game catcher if Yogi Berra was in this game if we had his rights he would probably be the end game catcher but what are you going to do we're still waiting on that end game catcher now we're going to move into the outfield and there's a lot of great options for the left field position I'm going to try to keep this to primary but obviously you can use the center fielder right fielder at the left fielder spot and I don't think we have an end game primary left fielder a lot of great options we have the new Eddie Rosario 99 overall great contact obviously maxed out against righties and lefties great power against righties 121 power against righties 114 against lefties might be the best left fielder at the plate in the field though because of his 56 speed think he's a little slow even with high 80s low 90s fielding stats then we have Hank Aaron who looks like the best left fielder on paper but in game his swing is just a little slow if you can get a swing down he's probably the best left fielder he has great numbers against both sides contact wise power wise great in the field with 90s fielding high 80s arm accuracy and reacts time and then 80 speed 73 steel which is really solid for the outfield and then we have Tyler O'Neill, who's definitely the best fielder at the left fielder's position with the 99 speed 95 fielding and 96 reacts time also really good at the plate but in my opinion not as good as Rosario and Hank Aaron at the left fielder spot at the plate but there's a lot of great options here at left field like I said but I still think we're waiting for that certified number one overall left fielder we will have to see who they wind up dropping and now we have center fielders and I think the end game center fielder is going to be the best card in the game 99 MVP Mickey Mantle I don't think anybody's gonna be touching this card in the outfield for the remainder of the year too hard to beat switch hitting bat with 123 contact against righties 125 against lefties 125 power against righties 114 against lefties 90s fielding stats across the board 90 fielding 97 arm 94 arm accuracy 91 reaction with 95 speed 50 steel just going to be too difficult to beat this card he does everything well and he's a switch hitting bat willie mays is a really good card kike hernandez is a really good card so if you want to use willie mays at left field right field you can definitely do that because he's one of the best fielders in the game in the outfield with that 94 speed get on the parallel five that's 99 speed and you get on the parallel five that is 99 in every single fielding category and he's also really good at the plate and lastly to finish off the position players now we have right field and if we're talking primary positions only it's going to be 99 Mookie Betts but I already said he's the end game second baseman when you take into account secondary positions so I can't count him for right field so we have a lot of great options again none on this page here we have actually Vladimir Guerrero Sr. who's a really good option top three right fielder in my opinion if you like a lefty bat you can go Bellinger who's really really good against righties he's a stud in the field in every single aspect and he has decent speed we have Harper who might be better at the plate than Cody Bellinger but not the fielder that Cody Ballinger is. We have Larry Walker, who's really good. We have Acuna, who has great power. Not good enough contact. He's a good fielder, though. So a lot of great options, once again, at the right fielder spot. But without Mookie Betts, I still think we are waiting for our end game right fielder. Now that we talked all the position players, we're going to talk starting pitchers a little bit. We are going to be getting more starting pitchers, obviously, with TA5, with the World Series program, with new inning programs. Starting pitchers is a position that we get new pitchers all the time. So this is going to have to be updated, but I'm going to give you a few pitchers that I believe no matter who comes out in future programs will be end game for your starting rotation and I think the first one's going to be 99 Felix this card has great hits per nine even at this point in the year 122 121 stamina he has a great pitch selection change up four seam fastball sinker slurve and cutter 93 control is excellent individual pitch control all five pitches 85 and above 99 the four seam fastball and the sinker and the individual pitch break even better four pitches 93 and above 93 on the slurve 97 on the changeup 99 the four seam fastball and the sinker one of the best moving pitchers in the game I'll also use that for Lance McCullers him and Felix Hernandez very very close together not the per nine stats that Felix has but a great pitch selection great pitch tunneling ability great pitch selection like I said sinker slider knuckle curve change up and cutter I think Lance McCullers could be end game 
but we'll have to see. I wish his per nine stats were a little bit higher. If there are 120 hits per nine, like 110Ks per nine, I would say he's end game, but we still have to wait and see. Next guy I'm going to talk about is Justin Verlander. This guy is end game. It's going to be really hard to see who is going to be a pitcher that's going to be better than this Justin Verlander card in this game. This guy can do it all. Max hits per nine, good stamina, good control, has outlier with great velo, has good break, individual pitch control, four pitches, 85 and above, individual pitch break, four pitches, 88 and above. This card can do it all. My favorite pitcher in the game, and I think the best pitcher in the game is this Justin Verlander card. Nolan Ryan, we'll have to see. He has great velo, has outlier, one of the best fastballs in the game. Pitch selection though, not enough pitches for my liking, so I'm not sure if Nolan Ryan will hold up. Clayton Kershaw is really good, but his per nine stats not that high on legend. He's really good. Could be end game on legend because he has good break and he has good control, but because of the per nine stats on lower difficulties, don't think he's going to be a great starting pitcher option throughout the rest of the year. So I think that'll do it for the starting pitchers. Just going to talk about a few of them. Like I said, that constantly has to be updated. So that's a little more difficult because you need five pitchers for your starting pitcher position. Same thing's going to apply for the bullpen. We have a lot of great options. I think 99 Mo, Gossage, Jansen, going to be in everybody's bullpen if you get a full god squad for the remainder of the year going to be hard to replace those 399 overall righties those cards are really really good billy wagner should be in there bruce star gradwell has a great case to be in the god squad bullpen andrew miller billy wagner top two lefties in the game so they both should definitely be in there trevor hoffman's really good who else do we have here? Devin Williams has nasty break. A roll this Chapman. I apologize. I actually forgot about a roll this Chapman. He is the best lefty in the game. Then Billy Wagner and then Andrew Miller. So those three cards definitely should be in your bullpen. Chapman with outlier, obviously. Max per nine stats, decent control, excellent break. He is really, really good. The new 99 Kirby 8s wouldn't be end game in my opinion. Doesn't have the best pitch selection. Doesn't have outlier. Doesn't have the best control. Bullpen's difficult though because we're getting a lot of options like starting pitchers and you need eight guys in your bullpen. So there is a lot of great options. Like I said, the 99 righties, those three lefties, but there's just so many guys in the bullpen to really tell who's going to be end game. Okay, everyone, that's going to do it for the video today. End game cards in Diamond Dynasty. Did you agree or disagree with my end game cards? And I will be updating this probably again next month once we start December, once we get Team Affinity Season 5, new inning programs, the World Series program, and seeing which cards are end game and not end game anymore. If you did enjoy the video, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're new. I would greatly appreciate it. Make sure to follow me at my social links which are on the screen for y'all right now including my twitter tiktok instagram twitch stuff like that but that's gonna do for me today everyone i'll see you on the next video have a great rest of your day peace out